All right, here we go, ready? Most ancient belief systems in the world. Here we go. So, in order to dive into this topic, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of somebody, you know, thousands of years ago. So let's go back to, we'll go back to 6,000 years just for shits and giggles. And I know that's obviously not the beginning. However, let's just go back, you know? It seems like, well, I don't know that. I don't know that, truthfully. I mean, it seems like it isn't. It seems like it goes way, 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 way back. But who knows at the end of the day, really? But in order to understand this topic, you really want to put yourself in the shoes, or shall I say, maybe the moccasins of somebody that was living in those days, right? <clears throat> they didn't have electricity, they didn't have TVs, they didn't have anything. They didn't have nice, comfy beds and houses and heat. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> they did not have they didn't have the modern luxuries that we have today they were a very plain obviously people they had probably their small little houses their little shacks their little things their little mud huts their little wood huts their little dugout huts, you know, whatever they had, depending on where they lived in, in the world, you know, in the country, they had different things that they lived in. They lived together in villages and in groups of people, and <clears throat> that's what they had. <clears throat> now, their major entertainment, their source of entertainment was the sky at night, okay, and they would they would watch the stars and over time they formed pictures with the stars and and out of those pictures came stories over time and out of those stories turned into myths over time and that all rolled into uh what we would now call religion but to go back to the beginning the very first belief system right the first belief system was so simple Put yourself way back then, okay? The sun comes up every day. The sun comes up. It's hot. It's warm. It warms everything. It brings life to the earth in the springtime, you know, in the northern hemisphere. It does all this amazing stuff. It, it's heat. It warms. At night, you have the opposite. At night, you have dark. You have the animals that come out that are nocturnal, that are scary. You have the howling of the animals. I can't even imagine what it was like 6,000 years ago. The noises at night. Oh my Lord, it was probably terrifying. So they developed their, their first belief system, which was that the daytime was, you know, awesome, right? It would, there, the sun was there and it heated up everything and the sun was amazing and at night it was scary as shit you know literally scary scary as hell and everyone feared the night and that that became the very first belief system it was the daytime and the nighttime all right now eventually that turned into a name the name was set why was the name of the night set because they began to you know they began to notice things in the sky, especially first, before the stars even, I imagine. The sun was the first thing that, you know, was super significant to them. So they watched it, they tracked it, they mapped it. The ancient people, they, they were obsessed with it because, and I, I, why wouldn't they be? I'm sure they were, you know? Um, I, I can't imagine if I, I'm obsessed with it. And, and, you know, not like pray to it, like, Oh, oh, sun here. No, I'm just saying, like, it's fascinating. It, like, and, and I, and we have, like, modern technology and science and all this stuff. Imagine back then, they had nothing. They didn't know a thing, allegedly. You know, so the sun, they were fascinated by. It. So they watched it, they tracked it, like I said, and all that. Now, the sun became <clears throat> such an important symbol because 
for one thing, when they started questioning things, the ancient people, you know, which they did, of course, we still do. Why are we here? How, who made us? These questions started popping up. What they did, in my opinion, is they used the sun as a representation for God because the sun resembles God. It, it, it is a metaphor for God, in a sense, because the sun is the light of the earth. The sun is the light of the earth. It's, it comes up every day, and when it comes up, it is the rising savior, the sun. The sun gives light to the earth, the sun. And the sun, it's not owned by any one person in particular. No ancient person built it and put it up there. So the ancient people, you know, they knew this. They knew that their, the people around them didn't build the sun. So who built the sun? It was God that built the sun to them. So it was God's sun. So God's sun would travel across the sky and they started watching the sun and paying attention and it was God's sun. And God's sun was the risen savior in the morning because he, he rose from, at one point, the dead because they believed, there are many beliefs in many um, different cultures in Egypt, they have stories about the sun. When the sun sets at night, there's a whole story, and it's awesome too. It's fascinating because it's fun mythology, but it's all about how the sun travels through the underworld, and it does all of this great, amazing stuff. I've done a video on it. It's a long story, so I'm not going to get into it. Now, the, the, the sun became, you know, because they watched it, and it started to, people started to form stories on the sun on the son of what on the son of what the son of god because it, it's god's son and <clears throat> now like even to bring it into language when we romanize the language not me or we but you know when they romanize the languages in old germanic the sun in the sky was spelt s-o-n and your son was spelt s-u-n now it's so obviously they different. They flipped everything on its head, like they did with everything else. But the the begin the very first like belief system and religion really uh, just set of ideas belief system was that the Son of God was the Savior of the world because He brought light and life to the earth. The Son of God, who brought love and light to the earth, because the light brings plants in in. The plants bring life, and even in you know, the sun. And it it, it, it it goes deep. I don't actually was going to say something, but I don't want to spoil the next part of what I'm going to talk about because it has. There are many parts to this ancient belief system. Okay, now when when they they decided that you know the dark dark was evil because it was because at night all the evil stuff happened. And they watching the sun, tracking the sun through the sky, they realize that the sun sets at night, that the sun goes away and it sets. So they, they named their evil lord, you know, their, their, their dark one was named Set. And he was the prince of darkness. Set is the prince of darkness and was the prince of darkness in Egypt and across many, across many uh, cultures, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. Now, um, as things started to progress, like I said, with the sun, they started to develop stories with the night. And they started to develop stories with the stars and the constellations. And we, we, what we got was, you know, 12, at one point it was 10, but 12 constellations that circle around the pole star, which is the North Star, which was founded, which is funny, or, you know, discovered in 69 AD by Claudius Ptolemy. And that's just funny because, come on, you're going to discover a star in 69 AD? What about the millions of people before you that saw the star? Everyone saw the star. You can't discover a star that's the same scam that they have now. Oh, buy your son a star for his birthday. 
Yeah, just mail me uh, $85 and uh, you own a star. Sure you do. What are you kidding me? You can't discover a star, like it's silly. So when people tell me that, oh, well, the pole star wasn't always the pole star. <laughs> Thuban was the pole star at one point. Well, guess what, dude? The constellations and the stars and stuff, they're written in like cave and pyramid walls that are thousands of years old in, in that they're all in the same, the same exact spot as they are now. Weird. So, I mean, as far as the last couple thousand years go, you know, uh, they haven't moved. They've been fixed and spinning and they've stayed. So anyone that wants to say Thuban was the old North Star, first of all, you can't prove it. Second of all, even to say you discovered the North Star is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Use common sense. You can't discover a star. Oh yeah, <laughs> I discovered the sun in 1963. <laughs> Come on, man. It's stupid. No, what we've been observing for a long time now is that the North Star is fixed and doesn't move. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays right there. People take the videos of it and just circles around. It's beautiful. It stays right there, which is further proof we're not spinning on a ball. However, they started to, to get back into it, they started to create characters based on what the stars looked like, the constellations. And this started to develop, and this is evident because, like I said, it's on the walls of ancient um, ancient pyramids, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you can Google it. Uh, all ancient temples, like, it's so insane, so sick. Not to mention, it's inside of cathedrals, thousand-year-old cathedrals. I mean, beautiful murals of cathedrals, uh, stained glass of the, all the zodiac signs. I mean, it's unbelievable. And they tell you, the Catholics, oh, you're going to go to hell if you learn about that. Ah. Or are you going to learn the truth? Or are you going to learn the truth and you're going to stop paying them money? Stop falling for their nonsense. You know, is that what it is? I think that's what it is from the looks of it. Anyway, so they developed all the characters and now we get stories. This is when, like the Greeks, they get the 12 Olympian gods. Okay, the 12. The 12 of them. Why 12? Because there were 12 constellations in the sky and it all revolved around, at first, like I said, the day versus night. And then the next serious set of beliefs, like the next real hardcore set of um, beliefs, it came from the stars because that was at night. They spent the rest of their hours laying down, looking up, making up stories. So that's where all of it comes from. Now you get, you know, all of your Greek character mythology. Then you get the um, Chinese. They have a completely different set of characters, but it's based on the animals that live in the land that you live in. That's what it was based on. Okay. Now, to get back to the sun, if you don't know what the winter solstice is, I've made, I've talked about it in so many videos. I like, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. I'll run through it. So if you've seen it before, it'll be quick. This, the winter solstice is this. It happens on December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. What happens in the ancient people figure this out. And this is what happens today to this day. The sun sets one degree difference from itself every day. So if the sun sets here, tomorrow it'll set here, the next day here, the next day here, the next day here, the next day here. And it does that every day, one degree. And the ancient people figured this out by putting down things on the ground, like uh, making these sundials and they would watch and they would mark the shadow and track the sun and they figured it out. And they were like, oh my, wow, wait, wait a minute. The sun, of God, it's God's son, the son of God, it stops moving on December 22nd. I mean, on our calendar back then, it was still a day. It wasn't our calendar day because this is a fake made up calendar. But on their calendar, which a lot of the ancient people use two calendars, a lunar and a solar. The lunar was 13 months of 13 moon cycles and the solar was a 10 month calendar. 
But so the sun on December 22nd, 23rd and 24th for only three days, this happens every year. It's been happening forever. It stops moving and sets in the same location three days in a row. The ancient people would watch their sundial and they'd, they'd watch and the, the shadow wouldn't move from where they had marked it the day before. It stayed there. And they were like, wait a minute, what? What's going on here? And then they went back to the sundial the next day and they watched the sundial and the shadow stayed in the same place. And they were, they were mind boggled because the son of God, the son of God, didn't he, he didn't move so they were like this can't be so now it's two days on the third day they went back out they looked at their sundial and it didn't move again three days and all the ancient people pro probably in my opinion in my guessing they probably went crazy they probably oh my god the son of god is dead because it's not moving and anything to the ancient people was dead if it didn't move. Okay, especially for three days, it didn't move. So the son of God died. And ironically, this happens on December 22nd, 23rd and 24th. On the 25th of December, the sun starts to move again on the sundial as the sun comes back to the Northern hemisphere. So the ancient people all of a sudden that next day they came out expecting maybe it won't move maybe it's maybe it's dead for life and they came out and the sun moved and the shadow moved and the sun had resurrected from the dead and the sun they considered the sun dead for three days and then resurrected and then it and then as other cultures picked this up they, they, you know, he, the son of God was dead in a tomb. The son of God was dead in a cave. The son of God was dead on the floor. The son of God was dead in your kitchen. He's been dead everywhere. Okay? He's the son of God. And <clears throat> it's a, it's, it's, we're talking about the son. This is what the son does. So basically what, what happened next now is that's the next big sun event, the big sun event to happen in the sky where people in the ancient world, in my opinion, were probably just losing their minds, you know, like, oh my Lord, what is going, how? The sun is dead and it is risen, risen from the dead. Now what happens next is time, so much time now has progressed probably, in my guess, thousands of years probably, because took a long time to learn all this stuff and figure this out. So now they're combining their constellation information with the son of God dying. And they're, they're noticing things. One of the first big things that they noticed after that was that every year when this happens, when the sun dies in its place, directly behind the sun is a constellation of stars. And those stars form a cross when you put them together. There are four stars that form a cross. And so they decided in this, so this is seen in many, many um, myths and stories. They decided that the son of God died on, a, on the cross. Now, obviously many religions has picked up on this and this idea, but this idea happens in the sky. Okay, the Son of God dies on December 22nd. It, li it dies for three days and is resurrected on December 25th. And it dies on the cross. And the Son of God is then resurrected from the dead. And then they started incorporating stars in constellations. Okay, and as time progressed, you know, the stories got more and more impressive fantastical amazing I mean they just got more and more insane but the beginning the very first like really idea religion like I said theology religion is that you know that that the dark was evil and then it became set and that the Sun was the Son of God and that the son of God, they learned, the ancient people learned that the son of God dies. And they ended up learning the son of God dies on the cross. And, you know, they learned, they learned a lot.
and it's all in the sky. It all happens in the sky. Now, just for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go any further, but I, I normally when I do this topic and discuss this topic, I could talk about it for one thing for hours, but I like to tie in um, the Bible because a lot of the Bible, in the Bible, a lot of those stories that we read that we've heard our whole lives are telling us exactly what's going on in the sky. You know, the, the biblical stories are in the stars themselves and they can be, t the whole thing can be told out with the stars and the movement of the sun and through the zodiac signs and all of it. It can be, the whole thing can be told out, the whole entire book, okay? And um, it also, the Bible can be told, told the story in the body as well because, you know, the sacred um, Christ fluid rises from the root of the body, from the, from the feet of the ground up and it goes up through the Jordan River and up through the 33 vertebrae of the spine and up into the pineal gland and up into your head. And when you do all of this and you are sitting in Indian style and doing your meditation, you are in the shape of a pyramid and the tip is your pineal gland and it. So it's internal, it's in the sky, like the principle in the seven hermetic principles, okay? It's as above, so below. When you understand this concept and truly understand as above, so below, you will have a profound experience that I can't even explain to you. But until next time, I love you all. And remember, this is for entertainment purposes. Follow me on Telegram where I'm gonna start going live and just really letting them have it because I have to be really limited to my words on TikTok. I love you all, and this is Entertainment Purposes.